Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture series on kinematic analysis of mechanisms using analytical methods. Under this, we are studying analytical method for velocity and acceleration analysis of slider crank mechanism, complex algebra and vector algebra methods for kinematic analysis of planar mechanisms and analysis of host joint. In today's lecture, we will solve one numerical on complex algebra method. Hello everyone, in this video we will solve one numerical on complex algebra method. Here is the problem statement. IC engine mechanism is given with a crank radius of 50 mm. So we will indicate crank radius by R. So R equals to 50 mm, so 0 0.05 meters is the crank length or crank radius connecting rod is 200 millimeters in length so we indicate length of connecting rod by l so l is equals to 0.2 meters crank speed is 100 radium per second clockwise so omega is equals to 100 radian per second in clockwise direction at the instant where the crank is at 40 degrees from IDC. So with respect to IDC we indicate crank displacement by theta. So displacement of crank from IDC is 40 degrees. So theta is 40 degrees. We have to determine the piston velocity. So Vp is equals to question mark using complex algebra method. So first of all let us draw the configuration diagram of single sided crank chain so this is the connecting rod the crank the piston okay so this is IDC and instantaneous displacement of crank is theta from IDC. Now after the configuration diagram, the very first step is to mark the position vectors of one extreme point of a link relative to another extreme point on the same link. So for crank, I will mark the position vector in this direction to define the position of crank pin relative to the center of the crankshaft. Let us name this vector as vector R2. Then for connecting rod, we will define the position of piston pin with respect to the crank pin using the vector R3 bar. Now the next link is slider. For the slider, let us define the position of slider with respect to the fixed link using vector R4 bar. Now we have defined the position of one extreme point of a link relative to the another extreme point of the same link using position vectors for all the links. Now in the next step we will uh, write the vector loop equation. The vectors acting in the same sense are to be added or vectors placed tail to head are to be added and vectors placed head to head or tail to tail are to be subtracted. Now from this vector loop, uh, from this position vectors, we will draw the vector loop equation. So R2 bar plus R3 bar is equals to R4 bar is the vector loop equation. Now we have to solve the problem using complex algebra method. So we will express all these vectors in complex form. So R2 bar is equals to R2 e raised to i theta 2. In the complex form we represent vector R bar as the magnitude R into the unit vector in the direction of vector r bar. 
e raised to i theta. So we will express all these vectors in this complex form. So this is R2. The for R3, R3 into i, e raised to i theta 3 is equals to R4 e raised to i theta 4. Now all the equations contain the orientation of vectors or direction of vectors theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4. So let us define the thetas for all these vectors. So we will define theta from positive uh, negative x axis in clockwise sense. So this is theta 2 and we have to mark the angles at the tail of the vectors. This is theta 3 and theta 4 is 0. Now we will substitute the values of thetas in this equation. So my equation becomes now R2 e raised to i theta 2 plus R3 e raised to i theta 3 equals to R4 theta 4 is 0 so e raised to 0 is 1. Now R2 is the length of crank. We indicate the length of crank by small r. So r e raised to i theta 2 plus r3 is the length of connecting rod that is L. So L e raised to i theta 3 is equals to r4 is the length of vector r4 bar. So let us suppose that at this instance the length of vector r4 bar or the position of the slider from the crank end is x. So R4 is x. So let us call this as equation number 1. Now in the second step, we will express this exponential term in the trigonometric terms using Euler's equation. So R cos of theta 2 plus i sin of theta 2 plus l cos of theta 3 plus i sin of theta 3 is equals to x. Now let us separate the real parts and imaginary parts of this equation. So real parts means the terms which do not contain i imaginary number so r cos of theta 2 plus l cos of theta 3 is equals to x separating real parts now separating imaginary parts r sin of theta 2 plus l sin of theta 3 equals to 0 separating imaginary parts Now let us solve this equation to get the value of theta 3. R is 0 0.05, sine of theta 2 is 40, plus L is 0.2, sine of theta 3 equals to 0. Now solving this equation we get sine of theta 3 is equals to minus 0.1605 therefore theta 3 is equals to minus 9.235 degrees now theta 3 has negative sign that means we have got the value of theta 3 in counterclockwise direction because we have mark the displacements theta in clockwise sense as positive we have got the answer with a negative sign that means the answer is in counterclockwise sense so we'll convert this in the clockwise sense so theta 3 equals to this is 9 so theta 3 equals to 360 minus 9 that is 
three fifty point seven six five degrees. So this is the angular displacement of the connecting rod. Now I will rewrite equation number one. so that we can proceed so r e raised to i theta 2 plus l e raised to i theta 3 equals to x this is our equation number 1 now we have determined the displacement of the connecting rod which was unknown from the displacement equation by solving this displacement equation that is equation number 1 we can obtain the magnitudes or the directions of the unknown vectors so by solving this equation we have obtained the unknown direction of vector r3 now at this stage we know the magnitude and direction of all the vectors so to find out the velocity we will differentiate this displacement equation equation number one with respect to time so time derivative of this r e raised to i theta is r common derivative of e raised to i theta 2 is e raised to i theta 2 and derivative of i theta 2 is i theta 2 dot plus e raised to i theta 2 common derivative of r is r dot similarly l e raised to i theta 3 i theta 3 dot plus e raised to i theta 3 l dot equals to x dot now what about this r dot r dot is the derivative of magnitude of vector r2 the magnitude of vector r2 that is length of vector r2 that is r is constant so r dot derivative of constant is zero similarly length of connecting rod is constant so derivative of length l that is l dot is zero so we will rewrite this equation r i the theta 2 dot is time derivative of angular displacement of vector 2 which is angular velocity of vector 2 so r i omega 2 e raised to i theta 2 plus l i theta 3 dot is omega 3 e raised to i theta 3 equals to x dot is time derivative of piston displacement that is piston velocity velocity of piston vp so vp is equals to we will express this exponential terms in the trigonometric terms using euler's equation so i omega 2 cos of theta 2 plus i sine of theta 2 plus l i omega 3 cos of theta 3 plus i sine of theta 3 then the next step we will take this i inside the bracket this i inside the bracket so vp is equals to i omega 2 cos of theta 2 now i into i is i square is equals to minus 1 minus omega 2 sine of theta 2 plus l i omega 3 so we have missed this r so r r cos of theta 3 minus l omega 3 sine of theta 3 now let us separate the real and imaginary parts of this equation First of all, we will separate the imaginary parts. 0 equals to r omega 2 cos of theta 2. These two are the imaginary parts. Plus L omega 3 cos of theta 3. I will substitute the values. 
0 equals to r is 0 0.05 omega 2 is 100 into theta 2 is 40 so cos of 40 plus length of connecting rod is 0.2 into omega 3 is unknown into cos of 350.765 so after solving this we will get the value of omega 3 so omega 3 is equals to minus 19.42 radian per second So after solving this we get omega 3 equals to minus 90 radian per second that is 90 radian per second counterclockwise now let us separate the real parts of this equation so vp is equals to minus r omega 2 sine of theta 2 minus L omega 3 sine of theta 3 this is equals to value of R is 0 0.05 minus omega 2 is 100 theta 2 is 40 minus 0 0.2 is the length of connecting rod into omega 3 is minus 19.04 into sine of theta 3 350 0.765 now after solving this we will get the velocity of piston so which is equals to minus 3.836 meter per second minus means we have drawn the position vector towards left we have got the velocity with the negative sign means velocity is towards right that is piston is moving towards the crank end so vp is equals to 3.836 meter per second towards crank end so piston is moving this with this velocity towards the crank end so this is our answer this is the velocity of piston so we'll remember the steps to solve the problem using complex algebra method. First we draw the configuration diagram. Then we mark the position vectors for all the extreme points of the links. Then we write the vector loop equation. We express the vectors in the vector loop equation in complex form. We substitute the values of theta in the displacement equation we separate the real parts and imaginary parts to obtain the unknown magnitudes of displacement of the position vectors magnitude or direction of position vectors are obtained from equation number one then in the next step we differentiate equation number one to find out the unknown velocities thank you